at 6.30. Straight ahead, a large meth bust in Oklahoma. We'll have all the details coming up. Plus, an armed robbery early yesterday morning that led to a missing persons case when one of the victims disappeared. And a woman accused of intoxicated manslaughter was in court yesterday. We'll bring you the latest. These stories and more are next. Keep it here. The news starts now. The only newscast in true high definition, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 6.30 a.m. Good Thursday morning, Texoma. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Rita Cote. And I'm Jesse Schroeder. We're glad you're with us. Meteorologist Tom Miller is standing by in the Weather Center with a look at that morning forecast. Good morning. Mm, some of us fighting some very dense fog this morning, so be aware of that. As a matter of fact, a dense fog advisory has been issued for all of southern Oklahoma until the noon hour and uh, parts of North Texas as well underneath that advisory. Not all. However, we have seen visibilities down to less than a quarter of a mile, so please be careful. Let's go ahead and take a look at our weather aware day as we are expecting fog. If you're not seeing fog, it's probably drizzle. Some scattered showers as that cloud base kind of lowers into the area. And you can see on the satellite, we are sucked in underneath that Pacific moisture. Another upper level system headed our way for later tonight and tomorrow, so that means more scattered showers for us this afternoon, especially late tonight and through Friday as a warm front moves through the area. It has kept temperatures in the 40s and 50s this morning. And for those going headed off to that school bus or the walk to school, Probably need the raincoat, 48, and we'll see a temperature around 61 later this afternoon as we'll see a slow warming trend as that warm front moves through. But Friday, we are expecting a front to move through. That'll cool temperatures back down. Our forecast is coming up. All right. Thanks, Tom. Now, Tom has been warning us about the fog all mm -hmm. morning, and driving in fog can be a little tricky. Madeline Schmidt joins us live this morning. Madeline, how are things looking where you are? Yeah, good morning, Rita and Jesse. I'm standing on the side of U.S. Highway 69 in the southern Atoka County region near the Bryan County border. And watch as the headlights on this truck go by here. You'll see just how quickly they fade into the fog. It is very, very thick out here. It's probably one of those spots that Tom Miller was talking about where visibility is less than a quarter of a mile. And that being said, we want to share some driving tips for you because it is dangerous to drive in these conditions. The first tip, slow down and do not drive faster than your vision. Also, be cautious. Fog can become thick without warning and without being noticed until it's too late to react. Increase your following distance with other cars to ensure enough reaction time and stopping distance. And turn on all your lights, including your hazard lights. Use low beam headlights and fog lights, but whatever you do, do not use high beams in this weather. Again, very thick out here. You can see it again as another truck goes by and they are going rather fast so be sure to slow down especially to uh, avoid anyone else who could cause a problem in this very thick fog and of course be sure to stick with KXII as we follow this weather throughout the morning reporting live in Caney Madeline Schmidt News 12. Thanks, Madeline. 633 now. An armed robbery at a Paris family's home turned into a missing persons case for a few hours when a female living in the house disappeared. The woman is now home safe and two men are in jail. Matthew Boyd reports from Paris. Wake up around about 3, 3.30, the guns pointed and two people with masks and bandana. That was what Lewis and Ebony Patton and their small children woke up to Wednesday morning. Police say Demondre Gordon and Devin Neal, both of Paris, broke into the Patton's home in the 1200 block of Southeast 15th Street. Gordon and Neal held the Patton's at gunpoint as they ransacked their home, pocketing jewelry, cell phones, money, and grabbing a TV. He was up there, started laying, like leaning over me like he was going to shoot me, like, you know what I'm saying, in the head execution style, and I was like, dude, 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 come on, come on, man. Lewis says Neal left the room with the kid's TV, and Gordon demanded the PlayStation 3. That's the moment Lewis says he realized it was a life or death situation and he yeah, hit Gordon with the PlayStation and a fight ensued. He must have knocked his little man, his little uh, hooded, hood over off his face where he couldn't see. So he came up out of there and I was like, you, you gonna rob, really? During the scuffle, Ebony ran to several neighbors' homes trying to get help. She's screaming, they've got a gun, they've got a gun, they're in there with my babies. Ebony ran to a friend's house and was not heard from for several hours. It's not something that happens daily in our neighborhood. 
lived here 23 years and never had anything like this happen to us. That's why I'm so thankful they are neighbors, man. They had our back, really. Lewis suffered minor injuries from the fight and says he plans to increase his home security soon. We're going to be prepared next time. That was Matthew Boyd reporting for us. Meth is a huge problem across Oklahoma, but the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics says they've nabbed three major suppliers in Bryan County. The sting operation recovered half a pound of meth with a street value of about $7,000 and landed three people in jail. Gustavo Bautista, Robert Joseph Lance, and Christy Michelle Ruplanis are charged with trafficking methamphetamine and possession of a firearm during commission of a felony. Matt McLean watched the sting unfold on the corner of Folsom Drive and North Washington Avenue in Durant. I walked out and there was three cop cars sitting out here and uh, they had one car pulled over and from what I understand it was a methamphetamine bust, which I understand is really bad in this area right now. Authorities say they hope to follow the drug trail to the original source. A Bryan County man convicted of killing his 14-month-old son will remain in prison after an Oklahoma court rejected his appeal. Marin Allison's son Ethan died of a massive skull fracture in 2012. Marin claimed the child accidentally fell, but authorities say the injury was too severe and had to be intentional. In his appeal, Marin said a doctor who was unable to attend the trial should not have been allowed to testify. The court said the doctor's testimony didn't contribute to the verdict. Jurors faulted Marin Allison for failing to seek prompt medical attention for the child. A woman of a, accused of intoxicated manslaughter in an accident that killed a 31-year-old Tioga woman was in court yesterday. Our reporter Danielle Rivera spoke to her. Yes, ma'am. 44-year-old Christy Swinney appeared in Grayson County Court Wednesday. Miss Swinney? Who are you? Daniela Rivera. I'm with News 12. But she didn't want to answer any of our questions. Do you have a comment? Swinney is accused of driving while on prescription medications, causing the accident that claimed the life of 31-year-old Misty Williams. Miss Swinney, do you have anything to say to Misty Williams' family? Anytime you get behind the wheel, um, and you're impaired by prescription medication. You're responsible for what you put in your body. Texas DPS worked the accident back in 2012 and told News 12 Swinney was driving northbound on Highway 377 just south of Tioga when she crossed over the center median and hit Williams' vehicle head on. Another vehicle then hit the side of Williams' car, killing her. Get in front of me. A second passenger involved in the wreck sustained injuries. Swinney is charged with intoxicated manslaughter with a vehicle and intoxicated assault with a vehicle causing serious bodily injury. You have nothing to say to the victim's families? That was Daniela Rivera reporting. The Texas Attorney General's office says it won't fight a federal appeals court ruling that halted an execution scheduled for last night. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals granted a reprieve just hours before condemned killer Scott Panita was set to be executed. The Wisconsin native was sentenced to death for fatally shooting his estranged wife's parents 22 years ago in Texas. Panita's lawyers say he's too mentally ill to be executed and they sought the delay so he could undergo new competency tests. The Fifth Circuit says a hearing will be scheduled later to consider the argument. The former president of the First National Bank in Davis is headed to federal prison and will have to pay more than $14 million after pleading guilty to bank fraud. 75-year-old W.A. Dub Moore was sentenced to 24 months for the crime. Assistant U.S. Attorney Melody Nelson says from 2009 through early 2011, Moore approved loans of more than $8 million for bank customer Roy Westbury. The bank's legal lending limit was just over $1 million. The ex-wife of an escaped Texoma inmate is now on the run from the law herself. Police say they were acting on a phone tip when they found Michael Corvallier in Fargo, Oklahoma. He had been missing since Thanksgiving Day from the McLeod Prison in Atoka County. He was found in his ex-wife, Rochelle Trebote's home. She's now wanted for harboring a fugitive. Court documents state Trebot visited McLeod the day of Corvallier's escape. It also states phone call recordings between the two talking about where to pick him up. He was serving time for assault and battery, larceny and extortion. Now he'll face a charge of escape.
He's now in the Mac Alford Correctional Center. The husband of an Atoka woman killed in a crash on Highway 69 yesterday has also died. OHP says 64 year old Carolyn Stephen was killed when the truck she was driving was rear ended by another pickup driven by 71 year old Jesse Fesperman of Texas. Troopers say he was distracted when his truck hit the back of Stevens, causing her to run off the side of the road and roll. Stevens' passenger, her husband, Lynn, was taken to the Medical Center of Oklahoma, where he died from his injuries. The accident is under investigation. The time now, 641, and folks heading out this morning are going to want to drive a little slower. Mm -hmm. Exactly, as we do have fog, drizzle, as well as some scattered showers around the area. And it looks like that will be the case throughout much of today, so take it easy as you head to work and school. We are looking at our Sherman Tower Cam, which is brought to you by Glen Polk Autoplex and Supercenter in Gainesville. And unlike where Maddie was in southern Atoka County, where they are socked in with uh, visibilities less than a couple miles, you can see we're doing pretty good with four to five mile visibility in the Sherman and Denison area, at least parts of it. So just be aware, just like that. And as I show you the TMC tower cam, you can see visibilities are reduced. And a dense fog advisory remains in effect until noon for much of southern Oklahoma and parts of the North Texas area. Not all of North Texas included in that. However, we have seen visibilities down to less than a mile in some parts of North Texas as well, southern Oklahoma. So it's a weather aware day. We're looking at fog. If you don't see the fog, well, the cloud base has lowered and you have drizzle and you also have some scattered showers. And again, that dense fog advisory until noon, scattered showers and visibilities less than a quarter of a mile this morning. Wow, take it easy. 55 in Sherman and Denison. On the other hand, in Ada, we're at 46, 50 in Ardmore, 50 in Durant. Generally, winds are out of the south to southeast at 5 to about seven miles per hour. The relative humidity, of course, 100%. We have a warm front that's backed itself into the Red River Valley, and that's why we're seeing temperatures in the mid to upper 40s across the northern sections. Clayton at 49, 47 in Paul's Valley and Duncan. On the other hand, on the south side of that warm front, we have 55 in McKinney. As those visibilities grab you, and they will, look how low they are. A half a mile visibility from Paul's Valley, Ardmore, Durant, into the Paris area. Only three tenths of a mile visibility in Hugo. But then on the other hand, of course, south of that warm front, we have seven mile visibility in McKinney. So take it easy this morning. The elevation at Lake Texoma has risen to 611.20 feet. And as we take a look at the satellite, we had one upper level system move across the area with just a few traces of amounts of rain, generally less than a tenth last night. And then another one that's across Arizona, that's going to pay us a visit later on tonight and through Friday. And then another one will be moving into the area late on Sunday. You can see the warm front moving through the area. And then Friday, tomorrow afternoon, the front kicks back through as a cold front. But this is Pacific uh, uh, air mass in nature, so it's not going to be all that cool. And then that next upper level system moves through, but it'll be to our north on Sunday. So the whole key to this is cloud cover, drizzle, maybe some mist, fog, and occasionally some scattered showers on and off, as is indicated by the Futurecast model. And the good news is it looks like this will be ending Friday evening, allowing us to see some sunshine and some nice conditions on Saturday. But 61 today. Fog, showers, drizzle, you bet. Have that rain gear handy. 50% chance of scattered showers for tonight, especially late tonight. Low around 55. 60% chance of scattered showers. Maybe a thunder shower Friday, 69. As that front moves through, a little cooler on Saturday, 58. But at least partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. A slight chance of scattered showers late Sunday, overcast in 55. Partly sunny, though, as we head to Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with highs generally in the mid to upper 50s. We'll be right back. Welcome back. A grand jury decision to clear a New York police officer in the death of an unarmed black man who died after being put in a chokehold was met with strong reactions across the country. John Champion has the story from Staten Island, New York. Demonstrators gathered around New York City almost immediately after it was announced that a New York grand jury did not indict a police officer in the death of Eric Garner. <laughs> Dozens of protesters in Manhattan were arrested for disrupting traffic along busy roads and streets. We saw the video where they choked that man to death. As people in Seattle, Chicago, and St. Louis marched in solidarity. We 
NYPD officer Daniel Pantaleo was caught on camera putting Garner in a chokehold for resisting arrest in July after he was stopped for illegally selling cigarettes. Video of the deadly encounter soon went viral. A medical examiner later ruled Garner's death a homicide. A memorial now grows here on Staten Island where Garner died. In the video, he could be heard saying, I can't breathe as officers tried taking him into custody. Chokeholds are banned under NYPD policy. In a statement, Officer Pantaleo expressed remorse over Garner's death, saying, quote, My family and I include him and his family in our prayers, and I hope that they will accept my personal condolences for their loss. Garner's family is angered. There's nothing that him or his prayers or anything else would make me feel any different. No, I don't accept his apology. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio urges protesters to remain peaceful, saying that's the only way to bring about real change. You're watching News 12 AM with Rita Cote. Jesse Schroeder, and from the Weather Authority, here's Tom Miller. Fog and drizzle has uh, paid a visit to Texoma this morning, so be aware of that as you make your commute. This is a look at our TMC Tower Cam brought to you by Glen Pocataplex and Super Center in Gainesville. And as you can see, visibility is not all that bad, but again, generally less than about three miles in the uh, Denison area. Sherman, you're up to around five mile visibility, but it's thicker. The further north you go on the north side of that warm front and dense fog advisory in effect until noon for southern Oklahoma, north Texas counties in the viewing area are not included as the visibilities increase the further south you go. But it is a weather aware day. If you're not seeing the fog, you're seeing those low cloud base sit on you. And as a result, you're seeing reduced visibilities, drizzle. And again, throughout the morning, we're going to have that opportunity of fog to settle in, reducing visibilities less than a quarter of a mile in some areas. 55 in Sherman and Denison. Temperatures are mild this morning. 50 in Ardmore, 50 in Durant, 46 degrees in Ada. Very light southeasterly winds. There is a weak frontal system working its way, a warm front, if you will, through the Red River Valley. And that's why we're generally seeing temperatures in the lower to mid 50s. Uh, south of the Red River and to the north, generally in the mid to upper 40s. But nonetheless, grab that light jacket and, of course, the rain gear. Here's your visibilities down to just over a mile in Ada, half a mile visibility from Ardmore over towards Durant, four mile visibility in Sherman and Denison, and uh, only half a mile visibility in Paris and then in McKinney. They're reporting about seven mile visibility. Elevation at Lake Texoma. At 611.20 feet, the water temperature at 62 degrees. One upper level system moved through last night, generally less than uh, five one hundredths of an inch of rain in your rain gauge. And then the next one is in Arizona. That'll probably give us a little more in the way of accumulating rainfall later on tonight and tomorrow. And there'll be yet another one that'll move through Sunday evening, but that one will pass to our north just like the second one will. And as a result, our rain amounts will not be all that much. But the good news is still Pacific system, so we're not looking at cold temperatures. Now, that said, there will be the opportunity of scattered showers today, tonight, and tomorrow, ending Friday evening. And if you're not seeing the shower activity, it'll probably be low clouds giving you some drizzle and some mist. So be aware of that. And again, it'll be more of a mist than a hit uh, as far as the precipitation goes. But 61 today. South to southeast winds of 5 to 15, scattered showers of 50% tonight of shower activity, mainly late tonight, 55 for a low, 60% chance of showers and embedded thunderstorm, not out of the question, Friday, 69, shower activity ending as we head into Friday evening, 58, partly cloudy Saturday, Sunday, a slight chance of rain, 55, and we'll keep it in the mid-50s with mostly sunny skies Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. All right, Tom, thank you. Johnston County EMS is hosting a fill the ambulance toy and food drive this week to help families in need this Christmas. Director Kenny Power says people can drop off unwrapped toys or non perishable food items today from 3 until 7 tonight in front of the Johnston County Courthouse and Sooners Grocery Store or Saturday from 10 in the morning until 2 at those same places. He says the toys will go towards the DHS Angel Tree Project and they'll be delivered to hundreds of kids countywide. Kids come running out, and then, of course, we take the sacks and deliver them, and it, it, it's cool. It, it, it's really cool. 
Power says any food donated will go to DHS and the Ministerial Alliance. The White House is all ready for Christmas and dozens of volunteers from across the country worked to help decorate. Washington Bureau Chief Jacqueline Poliscastro takes us inside for the first look at the Obama's holiday decorations. A children's winter wonderland. That's the theme at the White House this year, but it's definitely not just for kids. First Lady Michelle Obama showed us around, so let's take a look inside. Glitter, snowflakes, bows, and reindeer. A winter wonderland inside the White House. There are toy trains underneath beautifully decorated trees. A gingerbread house built from 80 pounds of gingerbread dough. And the first dogs, Bo and Sunny, made of more than a mile of black and white satin ribbon. We are grateful to the volunteers. We are especially grateful to all of our service members, our veterans, their families. We're truly grateful. The White House has 26 public Christmas trees. The biggest one stands 18 feet high and 12 feet wide. Some of the trees honor men and women who lost their lives serving our country. Gold stars mark their sacrifice. First Lady Michelle Obama worked to spread cheer to veterans and their families, saying it's their service that makes her thankful this year. We want to make sure that you guys are honored and supported um, every single day. And that's why, once again, we are celebrating our military families with our holiday decorations here at the White House. You just got the first look at the Christmas decorations inside the White House. The First Lady says more than 65,000 people will visit this holiday season. Reporting at the White House, I'm Jacqueline Policastro. Now here's a look at what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Coming up, protests erupt in New York after a decision not to indict a police officer in the death of Eric Garner. Garner's widow and mother join us in studio. Plus, is your flu shot enough to protect you this season? More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. And a final check of that forecast. It's fog and fines for most of Texoma until noon. Otherwise, fog and drizzle will continue the next couple of days. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. You can always go to KXII.com. Have a great day.